fucking creeped out what the fuck was that <laughs> and this is the spooky lightings playlist a podcast that tries to find the silver lighting in some of cinema's nope. scariest endings nope don't nope don't like that yes it is don't nope. because we're bringing God back something we did damn it way back in season one where uh this is the month of october so every episode releasing this month is horror themed or at least it was until we had some last minute changes, and one of those episodes <laughs> is a little different. But that being said, is that my everyone. fault? Did I do that? That's your I... fault. That's your okay, fault. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. And uh, Mally, before we get real into the podcast, I'm going to go ahead and assume you don't know anything about Charlie the Unicorn. <laughs> Fuck, fucking what now? <laughs> this is going to be a great episode. Anyway, this is uh, 101. This is episode 101 of our show, so things are still the same <laughs> we haven't done anything different haven't over gotten 100 better. episodes later if anything not, we not keep better. getting worse <laughs> and uh yeah like i said this is the the silver linings playlist um so we're a podcast that watches movies like the past 100 episodes that we've done movies that don't uh in in a neat little bow in a happily ever after uh movies that leave you feeling either <laughs> god damn it i was on i was on a roll I'm good. Don't Man. worry. I'm fine. We like to watch movies like that where uh, <coughs> this is this is supposed to be a new era, man. This is 101. <laughs> Get your shit together. I'm fine, thanks. Anyway, we watch, like we uh, we like to watch movies like Hide and Seek, which is the movie we're talking about today. Oh, uh, or let me rephrase that. We chose to watch movies like Hide okay. and Seek. Okay, um. I'm gonna I'm gonna 100 honesty. Mm -hmm. I had never seen or even heard of this movie before. You this, never saw this, this movie. You picked nope. it. I know. God, this movie was damn it. on a. We have a long ass list of potentials, and I just kind of picked it at random. God damn it! So I want to start off by just apologizing to everyone yeah. involved. You should also apologize to our guest whenever we introduce them <laughs> because. They, uh, I don't think they enjoyed this movie, and uh, I gotta say, neither did I. This movie is a pile I of shit. I can't say I did either, so, you know. <laughs> I there can't were, believe there were better one. There were better movies we could have covered, but my yeah. laziness won out, <laughs> and we're <sighs> talking about fucking hide and seek. I figured what one would be a powerhouse episode, like, we're, we're ranking in, we're in the triple digits now, we're off on a new era, but nope, we just picked this... No, God awful movie you know why, do, Dustin? Okay. I'm, try I'm trying to keep shit. I'm trying to keep expectations low. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Hey, I guess if you if you go in with a pessimistic attitude, we'll never disappoint you. That's what I'm saying. You keep your expectations yeah. low, you're never disappointed. <laughs> uh, speaking of having your expectations low, uh, for anyone that watched this movie before clicking the play button on our episode, I am sorry. Uh, well, you would think with a cast. That's being led by Robert De Niro and Dakota Fanning, uh, at least Dakota Fanning back when she was, like, really popular in the public's eye and everything. Like, you think this movie would have some legs, but it does not. This movie... Oh, the, <sighs> okay, the, well, cast, the cast is way too good for this movie. Way too good. And we'll, we'll get into it when we get there. Also, uh, we had that new uh, intro that played for our spooky episode, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, like I said, for this week and the next three episodes we do, all the way up to the season finale, uh, it's all horror themed, it's all spooky episodes, um, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. We haven't done this since season one, but the timing lined up, so I figured why not? It's good, it's good to have that. So, um, what, let me introduce our guests, because I know they have a lot to say about this movie, <laughs> and we were talking, uh, off mic. Uh, just about how much of a fucking trash heap this movie is. So let me introduce uh, the duo that I, whenever I think about one of them, I automatically think about the other, Jen and Brandy. So thank you, Brandy and Jen, for being on the show. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> there was an awkward pause there, and there I thought was they an just fucking, <laughs> I thought they did. 
Yeah, Look, this is our first time being on a podcast, okay? Like, we don't know this etiquette. Mm-hmm. I should. We're just therefore... very regular people who work <laughs> office jobs from home now. <laughs> I should therefore apologize because this is your first forays into podcasting and you have this movie to deal with. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I already said yeah. I'll take the hit on that one. That's my bad. I don't, that's, that's not my to bad. say, by the way. I don't want anyone who's listening to think, "Oh, this this is just going to be an hour of people just you know talking bad about a movie." We got we got specifics, we got notes, and it's it's still going to be entertaining. In fact, there are it's eleven a.m. Oh, <laughs> it's eleven a.m. Uh, where I am recording this episode, and I have decided I'm popping open a bottle of cheap wine because I. I gotta use it to get through this episode. <laughs> it's, no, it's fine, Dustin. Don't share with the rest of the class. <laughs> <laughs> Narcissistic it's literally like two dollar wine. <laughs> I specifically picked it out for this episode. Um. Anyway, um, we're talking, of course, about 2005's Hide and Seek. Uh, Mally, I'm still baffled. This was a bombshell that you dropped on me that you have not seen this movie before. I assumed because you picked it that you had some past experience with it. So. Nope, of all the never, movies you could have picked. Never even heard of it. It was just on the list. <laughs> That's the same thing here. I had never heard of this movie. And I don't know how a movie starring Robert De Niro and having Dakota Fanning uh, on it slipped under the radar like that. Like, what What happened? I mean, Hold on. Jen and Brandy, really? I don't think either of you had heard of this movie. Or you knew about it and you were like, like too, too many nah. people talking at once. Too many people talking at once. <laughs> Sorry. This movie <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> made a lot of money. I'm going to tell you that right now. This movie did make a lot of money. From who? And we will. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, give us know, the card I don't know back. Who saw it, it either. <laughs> it came out in January. It made money because nothing else came out. I have the box office list. Okay, we can go through these uh, facts right now. Uh, yeah, Jen's got the card back for us. What That's got? what I'm waiting I on. I, I feel like. I feel like I gotta let Jed loose. Like we normally have a segment where we go over all that stuff, but I feel like you're so nope, eager. So why don't you go, go ahead and bro. tell us? Let her go. <laughs> it's 2005. I'm a junior in high school. I have no idea this movie ever existed. Mm-hmm. But let's go down the list. So number one, <laughs> the weekend of January what 28th of 2005, Hide and Seek is number one. No, nope. what? Number two <laughs> is Are We There Yet? With Oof. Ice. Um, <laughs> oof. <laughs> Mm. And then, so it's almost like uh, what's that, that like that idea of uh, the popular girl that has the ugly friend just so she stands out more? I feel like that's hide and seek because like, are we there yet? It's got to be the ugly friend of that situation. Uh, <laughs> no, Dustin, no, no. you didn't have a good time in high school, did you, buddy? I, didn't it do good in the box <laughs> office though? Like, it, wasn't it, it like a big family really movie? Well. Well, well, are we there oh, yet? Oh, are we I mean, there yet? Oh, I don't know. Because, like, that's a different type of audience going to see Are We There Yet than Hide and Seek. That's very true. Let me see how much money that movie made. Uh, Jen, I know you got some stats, too, so you oh, want to well, uh, continue there? Number three was Million Dollar Baby. Oscar oh, Wimbledon. Wow. Million Dollar Shit. Baby was number three. How was that number <laughs> also, three? Also, uh, domestically... At the time, are didn't we there that yet win made a, $82 million. Didn't Million Dollar Baby win an Oscar? Lots of Oscars. Yes, it did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like that was a big movie. That How was it number <sighs> three? <laughs> and then number four, we have Coach Carter. Mm. I remember oh. that. Yeah. Number five, yeah. Robert De Niro decided to show his face again with Meet the Fockers. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> double, double De Niro weekend there. So yeah. that was the top right. five. Wow. And... Wow. You know what? Um uh, let's since none of us have seen this movie, I'm gonna skip normally we like to talk about like what our relationship is with the movie, like the first time we saw it and everything, but since we <laughs> are all baby faces of this movie, why don't we jump in to the production and the details that Jen has kind of already broken up for us, but let's talk some more about the making of hide and seek. So yeah, the year is two thousand five, as we mentioned. The director is John Paulson. Uh, the movie stars Amber McDonald, Dylan Baker, Dakota Fanning, Robert De Niro, uh, Melissa Leo, Famke Jensen, Amy Irving, Robert John Burke, and Elizabeth Shue. Uh, the budget was $30 million, uh, and it managed to gross $127 million Jesus. worldwide. Jesus. Okay. Four Christ. times, four million? times its budget. So, millions. Okay. Millions. <laughs> Like so, there's uh, an M there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
So was this, this was like the first of those chain of horror movies that became really big a few years ago that like literally took a children's game and made a horror movie out of it. Yeah. This, you got hide and seek, and then they fucking truth or dare, Ouija, like all that fucking shit. Well, since like that's the early. A, that's not a good like pitch for a fucking movie. No. I mean, like, it's you like. Can, like you can do a whole, like you can do a scene, like the Conjuring did that really well with the clapping game. But yeah. don't base an entire fucking movie off of it. That's just No, in the early horrible. 2000s, we had a real affinity for, like, creepy children is automatically scary in movies. Like, we're, well, we're now, just... Hold on. Children are fucking scary. They are. Children I, are scary, yeah. but when you... Point, Have you met kids? When, when they're the and focal was, point of your movie. It was a thing that, that already was going on before early 2000s. Like, remember the whole Grady twins thing? It's always been and a then, thing. And then there, mm-hmm. and then there yeah, was a whole series with Children my, of the Corn. Yeah. I guess my whole point mm. is, yeah, well, Children of the Corn is, like, the, the standout, but I would say the difference is movies like this where the forefront... Damien? Well, the forefront being the creepy kid, and, like, th- that's all this movie relies on is this kid is creepy. Like, the Grady well, Twins hey, release, again, like... kids are fucking... Cre- you t- Dustin, you got a kid, you tell me that motherfucker <laughs> yeah, will you out you on know occasion. firsthand. Occasionally. He's occasionally. So cute, though. It's fine. <laughs> like, you wake up in the middle of the night, that motherfucker's standing at the edge of your bed, illuminated by the hallway light, you're not gonna be like, oh, no, 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 And they're no, trying to no. get in the bathroom while does. you pee? Like, they, they just want to be wherever <laughs> the fuck you are? Here's what my son does. He doesn't stand in the doorway. I hear him sprinting down the hall and whipping our bedroom door open to climb nope, into bed with me. So every up. morning, Mm-mm. every nope. morning at like two a.m., I get, I get like I shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Just scares the fuck out. You hear? Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> no, fuck that, Dustin. That's why next time, if I, mm, every time I'm out in L.A., that's why I don't stay at your house, man. No, yeah, yeah. I definitely nah, goes get a, get a hotel gonna, room. I'm gonna punch a child. No, yeah, staying that's with justified. your friend with kids. Um, that's always last resort. No, that's just sorry. Yeah. Sorry about it, fine. Dustin, but it is like, <laughs> no, no, like I can, I, I but it. it's always I last resort. I get the creepy kid. I get the creepy kid thing. I'm just saying, making it the focal point of your movie, and especially when like that's no, all yeah. your trope is, it doesn't really work that well. At least with. The Omen and stuff like that, you had, like, a well-written screenplay. <laughs> you had competence, and now, well, at least it, back in those early 2000 movies, and, like, we're starting to kind of wind down from it, but, like, you can't just make your a kid your focal point like that. I mean, the movie, I didn't see the movie, but I know it, it got, you know, a good reputation was Orphan. Like, at least that had something going on with it, right? Never saw it. Orphan is Never, great. Yeah, I mean, Orphan was, like, the main, like, creepy kid movie that I liked. And but I kind of like... based on a true story. Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, wait, wait. wait what? What? <laughs> We're not going to gloss over that. I almost let that glide. Thing. Like, hold on. <laughs> so The fuck you mean true story? Well, yes, there was a, a, a little girl from Russia, quote unquote little girl. Oh. And so she was 10. Turns it's out connected she may or may not that? be 35. <laughs> And oh, well, no. I didn't think there was wait, episode, wasn't her name wait, like there Mary was an something? episode of Law and Order SVU about this. Well, you know what, you <laughs> guys, this thing was. is a lot more common than you think it is. Wait, Jim, wasn't That's her name wild. like Mary something? <laughs> like she what? had like a double name? Yeah, she had a double name. I remember yeah. that. Was like Ricky Bobby. I remember. I remember reading. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> first name. Yeah, her name was Ricky Bobby. But so I mean, it could either be. I, I, re- I remember reading up on her. Yeah, that was I mean, like it's either a old like serial killer. Well, well either, this just become a true crime oh, podcast yeah, because I'm so way. excited. Sorry, <laughs> but I mean, right, that, is, that is Jen's thing, is true crime it's podcast. It's either creepy kid or creepy adult that wants to be a kid. There's no in between. Me and Jen just became gotcha. best friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and lastly, before we get into the trailer, uh, this movie has the spookiest number for a Rotten Tomatoes score, mm. 13%. <laughs> That's what it deserves. And it earns it earns that thirteen. It's very it earns deserved. every single number. It worked hard for that thirteen, <laughs> right? Man, yeah. So right. I have to make um, oh. an educated guess that yes, De Niro is way too old to be Dakota Fanning's <laughs> oh, dad. I thought the yes, same thing. that's one of my notes. Why are the parents that's so one of my old? Notes. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, he a grandpa. He yeah, a grandpa. I'm sorry, yeah. no fucking grandpa. way. How old is Dakota yeah. Fanning supposed to be in this movie? Uh, four. I don't know. <laughs> I, no, I think she's supposed to be like. I, don't know. I would. I would guess like seven to eight. Eight or nine. I was gonna yeah. say ten. I don't know kids. I'm sorry, but yeah, yeah, it's hard to say. But I say, I say, I say at least. I, don't know. I feel like at the least seven. <laughs> at the, because... oh, hang on, hang on, Dustin. You are a resident kid expert. 
I, how don't ask me, man. I'm just, I'm in the same boat with Jen. I, you could be two, you could be nine, you could be sixteen. Wait, when no it comes to things how like that, I kid? just I just think back on like when I was a kid. It's like okay, like how was I responding to things at this age? It's like I Not- didn't have. I didn't have like responses where I was that aware of things until maybe like at least six. Before that, blur. like like I feel like that, like when you're four and five, you're like you're just like Bleh, everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have a four year old and then uh Priscilla's daughter is seven and they do not have this amount of cognitive thought. So, so we're gonna say Dakota Fanning's older than them. Yeah, she's probably like eight or she nine acted, in this movie, I would say. Maybe even cool. ten. She's acting like, like a bitchy ten. teenager. <laughs> <laughs> like she was like she was I like mean, lydia in, in beetlejuice hey the goth face was great she should have kept that going i was here for it like ma'am come to dinner this way i love it yeah it's crazy <laughs> seeing her in this movie and having just seen her in once upon a time in hollywood last year like Dude, the, she's how so much good in that little role in that movie she though. is great in and that she's movie also um, in the alienist if you like old tiny true i haven't Christ watched the alienist she so is good. Well, I have a question. Is this pre or post I Am Sam? Oh, mm. this is post. This yeah, is this is post. post. I'm pretty okay. sure. I feel like I, yeah, I Am Sam, we we were like probably middle school when that came oh, out. Okay, because that's a great movie. So these are just two opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah, me. I Am Sam was 2001. This is the same Wait, year as War of the Worlds. Robert oh. De Niro was oh, in I Am Sam. Okay, I thought okay, that was okay. Sean Penn. Sean Penn. Yeah, I Am Sam. And not Sean. Sean Penn's I am, in, in I Am Sam. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And of course, Men on Fire, which is a great movie that she's in, uh, came out the yeah, year before. Yeah. Yeah. I have another question. Um, is this yeah. pre or post Robert De Niro not giving a fuck about his career anymore? Oh, that's a very good question. Because, yeah, around the 2000s is when he just really stopped giving a shit. Yeah, he Let's was scroll down real quick through his IMDb's. He, hey, this so, one, I mean, this was clearly around the same time as Meet the Fockers. So I mean, he did Shark Tale the year before. Brandon, oh my god, Brandon, that fucking picture. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hang on. What what mo- what do you guys define as him not giving a fuck? Um, because I'm not gonna let y'all talk shit on Meet the Parents. Meet the Parents is great. No, Meet the Parents was good. Um, Meet the Fockers was unnecessary. Yeah, like that yeah, was one of those instances where one. they turned it into a franchise, and it's like literally no one wanted this to be a franchise. Well, let's not forget he did the Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. I think the same that might have been me really. I mean, there's just a spectrum of the 2000s. He just was like, "Cut me a check. I don't care. Let's." I go. would say, I would say, post Jackie Brown, he just got lucky with some roles mm-hmm. like Meet the Parents, and everything else is just dog shit. Yeah, like, it's like a nose of. Yeah, but I mean, he didn't. He's he's good in Machete, but he's also doing like a minor role. A lot of these I haven't even heard of. You never seen Machete? Machete is great. Oh, I never saw Machete. Oh, okay, man, Machete is great. Um, yeah, some of these are just is dog shit, like Dirty Grandpa. Yeah, I'm looking at a lot of these names, I'm like I, I didn't even hear about that movie. You saw The Irishman, right, Mally? Yeah. Is it good? It's long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I want to see it because I know it's necessary to see like a Martin Scorsese film, but I'm also like, do yeah. I want to sit here for three fucking hours? Yeah, I, mean, I think his comeback is the Joker, even if he's not, really not in it that long. Well, he's he's good as Bernie Madoff in in Wizard of Lies. Uh, I actually didn't watch that. It's a pretty good movie. Like he he does a good Bernie Madoff. I, Joker, he's good in, but I also I think we talked about this on the episode we did for Joker. I do feel like he's kind of sleepwalking through that movie. Like he doesn't have much to do until that climax, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm he's like I said. I think he gets these little nuggets in here that are like, yeah, this is good, this is good. But most of it's dog shit. Grudge match. Did anybody even see what that? Oh my god, that? dirty <laughs> grandpa. That's him versus uh. Who's it, who's he fighting? Stallone, yeah. It's like an old man boxing. I don't want to see old people fight. That sounds unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> um all right. Well why don't I, we... I definitely want to see old people fight. <laughs> why don't we get into right. the trailer? Oh no. Uh, oh, yeah, we're supposed to be talking about a movie. Fuck. Yeah, we're supposed to be talking about hide and seek here. So why don't we watch the trailer? Because I'm guessing a lot of people aren't familiar with this movie. So this will give you kind of an idea of the tone uh of the movie. I feel like this is gonna be fucking terrible. Oh, it's a bad. It's a bad trailer. We're gonna move. I hate it already. The country. What about Emily? I said it was a really good con to man. Brandon's right. She's flooded with memories. I hate how big this fucking overlay of the 20th Century Fox logo is. It's taking up most of my screen. I mean, I didn't even realize anyone else Can we get more Jean Grey? She's great. It does get pretty quiet in the off season. 
And uh, who, what's the officer, Thank the actor that's playing the police officer? Uh, does Dylan contract? Baker, is that his name? Yes. That guy he's good. Today? Yeah, he's been in things. When we went to town? It was before that. Is he... I hate Here dolls. Right this... <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Dude, why were Fanny. they just okay with her carrying around Annabelle the whole time? Like, that, that didn't, like... <laughs> they, you didn't think anything Brady, was up with her this? carrying around this creepy-ass doll? She had dolls everywhere. Yeah. I don't want to be too forward. It's weird to see Dakota Fanning as a kid out acting Robert De Niro. I hated girls who had <laughs> who had rooms like that. Did I tell you about my mommy? Coffees. Let's hope you don't wind up like her. Those bangs. <laughs> you know, Charlie doesn't exist. So, you shouldn't say that. Why not? Look she at the titles. Hair. The whole title <laughs> part of the movie is just trash. Mm-hmm. Would you like to play one? I'm already playing. Charlie did it. You do believe me, don't you, Daddy? This is a long cold. fucking trailer. Problem. <sighs> Without, you wouldn't even believe that it's under two minutes. <laughs> it feels... Already. We're on like hour six. This is trailer. literally how it felt <laughs> watching the movie. Like, it just goes on. It dragged yeah, for this so movie long. was struggle to get through. Because there was like a lot of spots where it just felt so boring. It was like, God, when it's Yeah, summer. at one point I paused it. I was like, I gotta be almost to the end. I had an hour fucking oh, left. Me Literally. Too. <laughs> like, like, there were wait. so many times I did that. I'm like, I still got like half an hour left of this shit. Yeah, I think the cardinal sin of this movie is that it's boring. Yeah. It's a very boring movie. The trailer was so boring, we talked over the whole oh, fucking yeah. thing. Yeah, I'm sorry if you were actually wanting to listen to that trailer. No, I mean, they can, okay. I mean, they can look it up on YouTube, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but fuck, who's yeah. really going link. to do that? Don't. <laughs> All right. Or you don't, mentioned Fom- Fomke, uh, fucking Jean Grey, Fomke Jensen. Mm-hmm. Dude, she will always be that chick from Nip Tuck to me. <gasps> I just finished yeah. Nip Tuck. Yeah. Amazing. I need to Isn't rewatch that Nip show Tuck. really problematic oh, nowadays? No, oh, God. Jen is yeah. the reason I got into Nip Tuck. Girl. I watched Nip Tuck when it was airing. I, like, I had no I, idea. I didn't even know I about it when it was time. airing. I didn't know about it until it hit Netflix. It's very transphobic. It is very, oh, yeah. transphobic. very transphobic. Spoilers considering Fomka Jensen's oh, character. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, and, yeah. But, man, y'all remember, like, the whole, was season two the or in, se- or in season three the whole storyline with the serial killer? Yeah, season three. Yeah. yeah. And the the car- Carver. Oh, my God. That was wasn't, the that, wasn't that reveal disappointing as fuck? I yeah. don't even remember what Ryan the reveal Murphy. was. What are you I know do? it's been a while since I've seen it too, whoa, but whoa, whoa. I just Ryan remember. Murphy did Ryan Nip Tuck. Yeah. did that show. Yeah. You didn't that know that? Kind of yeah, makes sense. No, no. that's like my discipline. No that show was like a prime example of how Ryan Murphy just falls off after like two or three seasons. Like his storyline just fell off the rails. Man. I will say though, Nip Tuck had much better pacing than like his American Horror Stories and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not anthology, but it's just there's some seasons where it just drags on for no reason. Yeah, and then shit for, like that'll happen. It'll be left field, and you're just like, like, were you just? Did you just come up with this last minute in the writing room? Like, what the fuck is this? That's yeah. exactly and, what uh, happened. I just wish someone would sit Ryan Murphy down and explain to him to stop. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> well, he just had that uh, new Netflix show that came out yeah, that is again, apparently stop. bombing. <laughs> just yeah. please stop. I don't know who wanted a prequel to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's it's Nest. Amazing but book. He did it. Amazing movie. No one asked for I that. I don't want this. Yeah. Wait. That's what he his new thing's about. It's that a prequel show with to Sarah Paulson, Ratched, Ratched, Ratched whatever Ratched. it's called. Why? Oh, Ratched. I keep getting Fuck. ads for that, but I like I haven't seen it, it. It's a prequel to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I never Nest. wondered to myself. Oh. This, I wonder what Nurse Ratchet was like thirty years yeah. ago. I don't know. <laughs> I I just kept reading Ryan it Murphy. as Ratchet, and I'm like, excuse you. <laughs> what did you just did you just call me the N word? It's a pretty Ratchet show. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. Like Ryan Murphy is. A guy that can get a lot done for a little, but the quality is is waning. Like, it's never up to par. It's really sad, like, how much work he gets. Man, we're really just genre yeah, jumping. Sorry, we start, we just... this, this, this episode, it went true crime for a bit, and now we're critiquing 
Fucking Ryan Murphy's career. <laughs> yeah, well, I gotta be honest, dude. There's not a lot of notes I have for this movie because it's so fucking boring. Yeah. I got a note. Yeah. One of the rules by which you should live your life is as follows. Never move to a big country house with a child. That is just asking for trouble. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, remote, honestly, remote don't honestly do as a black person watching this movie, I was like, this is really some white people shit. Like to oh, move, they had all the horror movie <laughs> to feel like, oh, I'm gonna move in the mi- and then like being all friendly with the sheriff. I'm like, this nigga is just just chatting with the sheriff like point. it's nothing. I don't think I don't think there's a single person of color in this there movie. There isn't. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, isn't. and then okay, are we gonna talk about the twist yet? Because there was that was like my main beef with this movie was Wait, like all the plot holes leading up to this. It'll be like, oh, Tell surprise, about- he is Charlie. It's like, wh- well, I have what? a question about the townsfolk. Why are they so weird? Why? Were- that's a good, yeah, there's no reason. <laughs> because no we, because we live in America, Jen. That's really how bumfuck people are. <laughs> but they just kept focusing on the like, daughter. You go out to so Ivy, like, Georgia, so- like, you're that creeped out. They're like, she's so beautiful. Your child is so special. Like, are you guys in a cult? I thought that was going to be a yeah. twist. I was hoping it was Dude, a cult. Dude, I thought this was a secret cult movie was and it wasn't. Right? That's my biggest Dude, issue I with thought... the twist was like, it was, le- it had this build up that there was like this, like, like, yeah, a cult, like demonic or like yeah, spirits man. or something. Bro, I thought Charlie was going to be Charles Manson's ghost. <laughs> Which would have been a way better ending to whatever we got. Oh my God. That would have right. been rock and roll as fuck. <laughs> I have a question. Um, How much... Let's take bets. I bet that Robert De Niro did not go to the premiere of this movie. <laughs> uh, would you? I will place money on have? someone blackmailed him into this. Or do you think he sent somebody on his behalf? Or maybe he got hella money from it. He just he just took I'm the hush money and left. See. That's what I'm, dude. What'd you say the budget was? Thirty million. Thirty million. Yeah, he <laughs> got some hush money and he took it and left. Yeah. Guaranteed. <laughs> So I'm just googling like the movie premiere, uh, not seeing. Bailed. He's <laughs> really like, much. I already cashed the check, so no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the like, check just cleared, so pretend I'm not, fucking I'm not here. This. Yeah, just the Dakota. Oh wow, look at her little outfit. Dakota, Dakota Fanning. Dakota, went. Yeah, that was she like peak. Like Jensen went. Peak her career. Just, aw. <laughs> no pictures of Robert De Niro on this red carpet. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, wasn't there. Going. Because it popped up in your little Google search, going back to my whole rant about how movies based on kids games are bad, mm-hmm. Ready or Not was fucking awesome. Ready or Not, I, Ready or Not is the better hide and seek. I movie. watched it on the plane, yes. I don't know that freaking one. out at the end. I was start, that movie dude, is awesome. Don't scream on a plane Red, is all I'm saying. <laughs> fuck, yeah. uh, I only scream on planes. <laughs> I saw the ending and just started screaming. <laughs> yeah, Samara Weaving, I'd be here for the era of her. Dude, did you watch Bill and Ted 3? I haven't seen it yet. It's If you like the first two, you'll fucking love it. I can't. Yeah, and she's fantastic. She looks like Harley Quinn, the actress that plays her. She does look she like does Harley Quinn. very like, distracting uh, sometimes. Dude, she's really good. Like, she was great in Guns Akimbo. She's great in Guns she's Akimbo. She's awesome in The Babysitter. The Babysitter 2 watched. came out, you guys. We have to watch yeah. it. It's, it's, I did watch it. It's, uh... Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, Priscilla was watching it, and I saw parts of it. I pushed play, and it, it played. <laughs> it has, just like this movie, it, it played. It worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It worked. Yeah, it did what it, it did what it, you signed up for. As much as you signed up for. I think this movie's got one of the laziest titles, too, that I've ever seen in a movie. Like, I didn't see, yeah. I didn't see. It's, yeah, everything it's about so this boring. movie is just super predictable and it's stale like, it's colored by numbers but somehow they still messed it up yeah yeah I mean, they, they check mm. all the boxes of like typical horror movie motifs like creepy dolls check creepy music box check whistling tea kettles check like, in, my, in my notes in all caps i just have dead cat in bathtub hey that's okay i need a trigger <laughs> warning before that oh yeah <laughs> I wonder www.doesthedogdie.com hey. I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> no, oh, does I, that dog. So, die. <laughs> no, it's does the dog. I know I, for the listeners I type does that dog die. <laughs> um, so that one specific dog only in that one movie. <laughs> well, I, this is a website that it, that Dustin showed me back, way back in like episode five or six it yeah, was our blue like valentine that. episode because i i was talking about how i got so sad every time the dog died so he hooked me up with this website i checked this shit 
regularly now. This um, site is also wrong. I think as I fuck. checked that after John Wick because I'm like, I didn't know this was gonna uh, happen. <laughs> also, this site gets every answer wrong. Is there a dead animal? There's no answer. Wow. Does the dog die? Well, I guess that's true. No, because there is no dog. Like, so now you have to Does go to sleep at night die? never knowing if that dog died or not. Who? <laughs> Live with that. So is this like user, community base? Is that something? Yeah. So yeah. There, there, it's oh, the community's not- die. Here we go. Boom. Yeah. See? Oh, Boom. 14 yeah. people confirmed. <laughs> yep. That means 14 people have seen this movie. Oh, no. Does a parent die? Too many yes. people. Does someone cheat? What is this website? I thought this was literally just a yes or no. <laughs> oh, no. It used to be. They've really expanded. Does someone have cancer? Yeah, yes. talk of a young child <laughs> dying of cancer. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, does someone does. fart or spit? Is electrotherapy no. used? You, these get so wow, specific. It what really it, it covers all bases, guys. Dude, like I said, they are needles and scrolling? syringes used. <laughs> Hey, people so are this is basically by a, a trigger warning website. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this should, they should just recall it triggerwarning.com. Literally, this is already taken. I, look at this. Uh, no, yeah, I think is uh, there, does someone old, drown? Old boys got that. Like, yeah. don't don't watch Jesus. horror movies if these are things you're worried yeah. about. Okay, I yeah. have another question. So, can we talk about the <laughs> does a dragon die? The jump scares yeah. are so bad. Oh yeah, does a dragon die? Yeah, of no. course. <laughs> So there's like a jump scare. Yeah, the jump scares are cat, boring. And then there's one of them waking up. It was all awful. Yeah, that was one of the things. I feel like that's like a lot of the horror movie tropes that they were going for. Like why it fell flat was the jump scares weren't jump scares. Like how was there supposed to be a jump scare when he's turning the lights on? Like <laughs> I'm supposed to be scared because there's lights now? Okay. Yes. Yes, Brady. <laughs> Um, wow. Like, so like, scary sometimes. Like, man. you guys took <laughs> the easiest jump scare opportunities and you just, you failed. You got an Speaking F. Speaking of the- What's interesting, too, I I mean, not to disparage TV directors, but I always think it's a sign uh, that things aren't as well as they should be when you start off directing movies and then you solely start doing episodes of television. I mean, he went straight like, to Chicago <laughs> PD. Like, he- <laughs> this, yeah, yeah, this guy jumped on the TV directing bandwagon. He um, was like, let so me fall back from I movies. Wanna, real quick. I, I want to get an opinion here. Um, all right. So Elizabeth Shue gets pushed out of a window, right? Oh, my God. It's more, no. of, a, it's more of a yeet is, out of a window if you, like, yes, pull yes. forward. I'm so well, glad you said yeah. that. Because... <laughs> is it me or does pushing someone out of a window seem a lot harder in real life than they make it look in movies? Side piece gets yeeted. Yeah. <laughs> like, she got yeeted. Like, 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 it was so forceful. I'm like, that's not how that works. I, I laughed uh, into a coma. <laughs> <laughs> it was very goofy looking. I paused the movie when she was about halfway out. And I was like, I looked at my living room window, which is pretty good size. And I was like, I don't know, man. Like, we well, have it's I Robert De Niro know, doing she, it. She doesn't like flip, oh, flip no. over backwards or anything. Like, she just goes straight like jettisons out <laughs> like i know this... i was sitting here looking at my window i'm like no nah, they would flip over like it would mm, i don't know it just logistically it didn't make sense to me <laughs> i know this isn't gonna play well f- for an audio podcast but i gotta rewatch this scene because it makes me laugh so hard. I have some <laughs> yeah i really want to rewatch it now <laughs> We're talking oh, here we go this is the part of the movie where I woke up because before this I was almost falling asleep. You gotta it. stay woke, Dustin. So <laughs> yeah, Dustin, twenty twenty. Well, so Charlie true. was just not the twist, reveal Charlie. the twist, but he was just sitting in the closet the whole time. Come out, the whole come time. Out yeah. Wherever you are. Okay. I sit in my closet all the time. <laughs> God oh. damn! <laughs> it's just so. <laughs> She goes, <laughs> there's like a hydraulic yeah. press that just shoots her out. Ooh, and she catches her foot on oh. that little awning right there. Oh, that poor stunt actress. Like, she catches her foot right there, too. Oh, no, that stunt actress died. <laughs> <laughs> was Rest it in peace. Yeah, I mean, woman. was it worth but it? But you know what? What a way to go. If you play it reverse, if you play it reverse, she's a superhero. Hey. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's an X-Men now. <laughs> yeah. Wait, hey, Jean Grey's already there. All right. Yeah. yeah, this is a secret superhero. Very true. <laughs> Man. Uh, yeah, poor Funk and Jensen, no, like, too, being dragged into this parts, movie. Like, the parts where, like, yeah, where they have the twist and they reveal, like, oh, he's Charlie. So it's like, so I'm supposed to believe some of these things where it's like the wind and like random door shutting. Yeah. I'm like, and he was also in the shot. I'm like, so what explains that? How do you explain Nothing. that that wasn't another entity outside of him? 
absolutely yeah, they didn't do a whole lot that's why i'm the, like there were so many covering. holes <laughs> i have a question yeah. does 206 have any significance to this movie because they kept showing it on the clock i'm like okay is something supposed to happen 206 I, I think that's supposed to be the time he killed his wife maybe? or the time she- i don't know no, no my just, problem know, like, no it's... my problem with the fact that he killed his wife too was like okay so he moved out into a whole nother state it's like so by the time they did forensics and autopsy, they didn't find that she had been suffocated instead of bled out. Yeah. Like, Shoddy police. Work. Like, <laughs> that wouldn't have caught up. Wait, no, actually, you know what? Shoddy police work, that's the most realistic, believable part of this fucking movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because why <laughs> the fuck didn't that sheriff? No, the sheriff, he pops up just like, oh, just gonna ask some questions when it's like the, he said her car was uh crashed on the side of the road outside of his place and he's like oh i'm just popping up just to just ask a few questions like that doesn't (laughs) tell you (laughs) that her car was crashed outside of his house i feel like like if robert de niro was black they would have just came up and shot him (laughs) they would have shot him brandy (laughs) yeah that's what i'm saying the movie would have been four minutes long (laughs) like robert de niro got away with so much because of white privilege yeah and, this is yeah. a and also, this movie. is a shitty movie. And again, not a single person that's black or Asian we don't, or anything in this um, movie. We don't live in upstate New York. No. We're not allowed there. But yeah. at first, they something. were supposed to be in New York. And there were still only white people. Yeah, they were in Manhattan, right? Yeah. We, that, that's pretty, that, about that's five realistic. minutes in Manhattan, then it's like, it dips the fuck out. Well, they couldn't afford to shoot there. We gotta... No, we gotta there are certain parts of Manhattan <laughs> where you will only see white people. Well, they made all so. the money back and then some. Yeah. Well, I mean, also to that, you know, the whole point of that cop too is I have a firm belief, and they do this in movies all the time, but you don't go into someone's house unless you're invited, even if the door is unlocked. Like if I show up to your house and the door is unlocked and it's open, I'm I'm calling the the police right then. I'm not walking into your fucking house. I'm not trying to see if there's an emergency. No, yeah. I'll, I'll even do an anonymous. <laughs> tip to 911. Hey, someone's front door is wide open. You might want to check it. Yeah, I'm not going in there. Why would I go in there? Fuck no. Right. No. (laughs) That's where murderers, that's their plan. That's like a vampire inviting you in. That's invitation for death. (laughs) I'm gonna be honest, depending on whose house it is, I might take a peek. You might might walk in. You might just be scoping out the joint just to come back That's a good way to fuck around and find out and get shot in the face. (laughs) Also, so what was the point of the, like, creepy-ass neighbor? Like, that, that pedophile seeming guy dude I thought, everybody in this movie is trying to fuck dakota fanning that's, that's what it is the point of him? <laughs> it's like, is he supposed to like are we supposed to believe that he's charlie or some shit at some point it's a red herring probably yeah i wonder if there's like a director's cut of this well, or like some deleted well, scenes you know there's like six alternate endings right i do i do like nobody cares enough to look at those well here's the thing i i did i looked at them yeah i must say (laughs) i mean yeah for the sake of this podcast but like (laughs) can i tell you too my favorite part of this movie is i think they do it at least four times is Robert De Niro is constantly waking up in a panic and ripping open shower curtains. Same. <laughs> like, it happens so much. <laughs> that's me every morning. <laughs> every night. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's how I get ready for a shower. <laughs> that's living under capitalism, Dustin. He wakes Dustin. up in a panic. <laughs> hey, we're in a pandemic. <laughs> I panic every single night. Basically, you just wake up that's screaming how, every how... single day. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Oh, that was... You just pop your eyes open like, ah! for me. <laughs> So, I mean, I have a question that's... about the shower scene. So, he would just... Do his shower, coop water, candles, crayon on the wall, and then go back to sleep? So many candles. So many candles. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Like, so you would just do this, and first of all, what is that water? I don't even know where you got that from. <laughs> yeah. And then go back to sleep? Same place where he got the cat. I mean, that's how, that's literally how me and my roommate communicate. <laughs> we don't, we don't shower, text each other. Yeah, shower we don't text each messages. other. I just, yeah, I just write stuff on the shower wall. And then, oh my god. I was, just, I was like, screaming at the fact that he actually, like, dug the cat out with his bare hands oh yeah that made me oh yeah. Made me yeah i was like oh. you actually yeah. touched the dead cat oh what are you <laughs> doing what this is how corona started <laughs> touching dead cats <laughs> like oh not dead bad cat like so he just like picked no one saw him pick a dead body up in broad daylight and right. bring it back mm-hmm. into his house no yeah, one it's saw almost that. like this movie wasn't written <laughs> yeah because well. she got pushed through the window during the day 
Yeah, during the day. And then he just picked <laughs> up a corpse and brought it back into his house, and no one saw anything. Well, it's like you said, it's white privilege. No one's going to call out Robert De Niro for <laughs> 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 that body. <laughs> like, oh, that's his wife. That's how they, you know, I mean, yeah. that's how they work. Frankly, that scene with her in the tub was also very upsetting. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like that. You know what's funny too is this movie is one year after Secret Window, and oh, that movie had the movie. same exact twist. That's a really great oh, movie. Though. I'd rather that watch that. It even staler. I think it's probably a movie you need to rewatch to really it's have that opinion. Not, it's not hey, good. I great. Yeah, theater, I forgot all. Hang on to this memory. I forgot We're about watching gonna it eventually too. Eventually, cover that on the show. Eventually, we'll get there. I'm gonna request that they come back for Secret Window. <laughs> oh, that's a good no, idea. No, because me disappointed the whole time because you ruined my 2005 going on the movie theater dream. Because I can't. We're ruining your childhood. I can't right go here. to movies anymore. So this, that's all I have to cling to. What hasn't ruined our childhood by now? Anytime there's a movie where the reveal is that the main character did it. Like, we gotta bring them back on the show. <laughs> Damn, Brady's oh, pissed. Man, that, oh, man. In that case, I wish they had been on The Passion of the Christ. Oh, when... God. Oh, fuck yeah. So that would've been a good one. I've never seen that movie. <laughs> so we're gonna have a Fight Club moment? We're, we're just the Fight oh, Club no. yeah. people Anytime now? Anytime there's a Fight Club moment, we gotta bring them on the I've show. I've never okay. seen Passion of the Christ and spent out, what, 20 years? I don't plan on it. Oh. Honestly, that was oh. that was like my main note during the twist. Was like, oh, not this tar- Tyler Durden plot line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brady called it. She's like, absolutely not. <laughs> For some, because we were talking about the passion, I thought you were about to say, "Oh man, not this passion <laughs> storyline." Just like, wait, what? Oh, <laughs> uh, not this guy being tortured that for is... two hours. <laughs> oh man, like, what oh my god, out? De Niro was Jesus the whole time. Ooh, a secret sequel to Passion okay. of the Christ. This movie. Well, I thought this the, with the money this movie made, I'm surprised there wasn't at least a direct to VOD or you know direct sequel, sequel yeah. or you know direct to DVD sequel. I'm kind of surprised, especially with. The ending or endings? Maybe there was. Maybe like all these child games are like in the secret. Like, I mean, like what, what are you going to call it? Hi- hider <laughs> Look, and secret. When God blesses us, don't question it, okay? When we get blessings, <laughs> oh, they have to call it like. It. Uh, They'd have to call it, like, Red Rover or something. Oh, I really wish you were on the Passion of the Christ episode. Well, now that the director's going to listen to this podcast, he's like, now is my chance to give the people what they want. I'm like, this is not what we wanted. <laughs> I hope um, we get a see. I, honestly, I hope the cast reprises their roles, too. I mean, Dakota Fan is, like, my age. She does not want to do this. They, oh, they do, like, a, like a Doctor Sleep kind of sequel. Like, she's yeah, going up. Or they yeah. have Millie Bobby Brown play her. Or we don't do any of this. <laughs> yeah, that's the best I option, honestly. I don't, I don't need your fucking negativity right now, okay? Look, that's hey. what Jen is for. <laughs> yeah, hello, I'm here. I'm here to make everyone I got feel one bad. other uh, Jen, what we other are clip. not best friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Friendship declined. <laughs> I got one other clip I want to play here, no. and it's just because... My favorite. Please stop. <laughs> my, it's my favorite Please one. Please stop showing me more of this movie. <laughs> oh my god, say, this part where the, this girl Dakota- <laughs> was ready to throw hands at her. <laughs> So this is where that girl, that woman that, um, yeah, this is where that woman that meets Robert Nero at, like, the park brings her daughter over to play with Dakota well, Fanning. No, isn't it Elizabeth Shue brings her over? Yeah. This is, is it Elizabeth yeah. Shue? Yeah, you're right. But it's not it's her. Supposed to be her niece. It's supposed to be her That's niece. Right. Yeah. That's does right, you're that, right. Okay, does that seem weird to anyone else? Yeah, a little bit. That, I would, that did feel awkward bringing to her me. niece I, over? I didn't know, like. I was like, I don't know if this is just me, but this does feel like this is kind of forced. Like, well, the character is niece. So did they just, they made her the niece, so when they kill Elizabeth Shue off, it wouldn't be that it's big of a deal. Bad. Yeah, it would Oh my god, yeah. you killed her uh, mom. <laughs> oh, you killed my aunt. But it's not that that would have been more interesting. Even though this movie starts out with the, the main character's mom dying. Yeah, so we can't have two yeah. dead moms in a movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we don't know. Elizabeth we're at capacity for daughter, dead moms, right? okay. <laughs> yeah, we're one dead mom per movie. <laughs> like, this isn't a Disney movie, okay? We have to have standards. Yeah, I love before, moms on that one. <laughs> before I play this clip, too, I gotta point out, you mentioned there's a lot of creepy dolls in this movie. I see oh, one, my, two, I hate it. three, four, I hated five, six, kids seven, like eight, this nine, ten. When I was a kid, I hated <laughs> and, spending the night at girls' houses that had dolls in their fucking Brady, rooms. They can't get a Barbie license, okay? They have to use creepy dolls. Yeah, clearly. Dolls. Also, just a little bottle of Elmer's glue, too, right? A little bottle of what? <laughs> That's Elmer's glue, right there. <laughs> okay, you know. Just, what does yeah. it have to do with anything, Dustin? <laughs> Nothing. I just thought I'd point it out. But th- I have to play this clip because I think Dakota Fanning's got one of the best 
child stank faces I've ever seen in a movie. And it was the in this clip that children. really... <laughs> the pettiest face I've ever seen. Oh. By the way, this is Penelope. Look at this face. Hey. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's me at work in every Zoom meeting, so it doesn't matter. Basically. <laughs> also, this poor girl has got, like, Jody Aries, like, hair. Like, look how stringy her poor bangs are in this hey, movie. Hey, don't talk about oh. my girl Jody Aries, okay? <laughs> no, Free she, her in 2020. She's got Speaking those, she's got those do-it-yourself bangs. <laughs> <laughs> like, where you literally uh, just take just... it, put it in a ponytail, and just snip it in the front. Well, fun fact, that's a wig. I thought they dyed her hair. No, that definitely is a wig. That oh, so this is this so is like, like a wig. this is like white Tyler Perry version oh, of wigs. Oh no, don't okay. talk about that, oh. Brady. Those are the Good worst, the worst wigs. Okay, sorry, we play the clip. <laughs> so I, I've literally gone through all my notes, other than what happens in the ending. Is there anything else we want to talk about before we get there? Well, I thought um, Dakota Fading was going to be a serial killer, and I thought we we're going to get like cool, you know, creepy kid. You know, killing bugs yeah. and cats. I'm like, hell yeah, let's do that. You they thought it was that. everything was than what actually happened because what actually happened was stupid. <laughs> it yeah. was the bare minimum they could do for a I want to talk about the fact that old boy traps Jean Grey. I can't re- remember any fucking characters' Just names in this movie. I, I do. So <laughs> it's either that he, or Fomka Jensen. He locks Jean Grey in a closet with a wooden spoon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm just saying, I've broken those motherfucking spoons stirring pasta. <laughs> They're not gonna hold anyone. How in aggressively a... are you stirring pasta? Aggressively makes hard, pasta. Hard, <laughs> Dustin. Hard. He forgot to mention this after he does a hit of meth. <laughs> <laughs> the superhuman hey, meth strike. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I'm from rural Indiana. I know my look. I'm from, look, we're from Columbus, Georgia. No one is judging. Okay. <laughs> oh, hey, y'all. Like oh, this is our oh, lifestyle. Y'all, y'all okay. are meth. Y- y'all are meth people too. Yeah, hell no, yeah. We, yeah. All, we all grew up uh, in, around that. I grew up yeah. across the street <laughs> from a trailer oh, park. I knew meth heads. I, I yeah. Oh hell yeah. We oh man, we meth folks. Jen, so, did you ever <laughs> live in Columbus? No, I'm from Augusta, which is like the weird bizarro of Columbus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she she's been to Columbus though, so she knows. It looks the exact same. Yeah, Brandy and I insane. grew up. Brandy and I grew up around this stuff, and then Jid would just like travel in. And I'm like, yep, still looks like shit. <laughs> no, I no, yeah. Once you travel out the southeast, like people think like like this kind of stuff, like you're you're insane. It's like what? You guys didn't grow up with people in high school, like. A robo tripping in the parking lot of yeah, Walmart. That's normal. That wasn't what um, people did in high school. Do uh, it also. Another thing is like people are like, "Man, what the fuck you mean? You robo tripped in a parking lot?" I'm like, "That's what we did in t- on Tuesdays. That was just well, it. literally the Walmart. That was tenth grade." Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, it I mean, was I was, always I was a Walmart just, parking lot, bro. I was a square friend that did, wasn't doing that. I was like, "I'm just here for the vibe, you guys." Um, I have, uh, can I have <laughs> one note about this movie that I actually did enjoy? Of course, Suicide Flipbook. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you mentioned hey, that. That was an impressive piece <laughs> like, of artwork. This is great. Also, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, we have a segment on this show where we uh, talk about a prop that we'd like to own from the oh, movie that for one ourselves. Is number one for me. That that's my yeah. prop cop. <laughs> that actually was kind of cool. Not gonna lie. You know what? If if we jump into prop cop, I knew y'all were gonna take that. I'm gonna take De Niro's notebook because I like notebooks. That's it. Yeah, nice pen. <laughs> go with the it notebook. Was, that was a nice pen. <laughs> um, Jen and Brandy, is there a prop from the movie that you can think of? And it doesn't have to be necessarily a prop prop. It can be wardrobe or set dressing. Is there something from the movie that you think would be fun to own for yourself? I mean, this movie, if you say I really no, didn't. I, I mean, be... Yeah, I really not didn't think about cat, that. I would like the dead cat. No, not the dead cat. Yeah, I would, I, like I would have had the cat before it was dead. <laughs> I kind of like the, uh, besides the suicide flipbook, I kind of like the old house key. Like, like the keys that are like those old big old ones. I love you know old houses t- oh, and things yeah. like that, but can that man not try to slip keys in at three o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Put it in the mailbox like an adult. Very true. That was another stupid red herring with that dude. Like they're like yeah. they were trying to make like that dude suspicious. It's like he's just a fucking weirdo. Again, yeah. Yeah. so much better if it was a secret in the morning. Okay. <laughs> he's like, yeah, we got a little cabin out in Canada. <laughs> okay wait sir get off my property <laughs> yeah for real all right um, uh mally since you... oh brandy wait. oh go ahead uh, oh, oh i just i yes. don't know i just randomly thought about uh probably the doll that she like 
uh, mutilated before she showed it to that girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Because that was the kind of shit I did to my Barbies when I was born. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> what? You never right. popped their heads off? Yeah, then I try to put them back, and they look like the dude from Nine Day Fiance with no neck. I hated it. Yeah, they they never look the same after that. So they you just have to the rock them headless. I did like um, Robert De Niro's rain jacket. That's a great fit. I would wear that. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, well, Molly, since you picked this movie, why don't you give us a recap? Stop uh, reminding case, me. <laughs> in case uh, the listener forgot what the ending of this movie is, um, why don't you oh, recap fuck. it for us? Uh, so, turns out that fucking Robert De Niro was Charlie the whole time. Uh, <gasps> oh, oh, my God. God. Oh, my God. <gasps> oh, dude, Prince I will say, though, there was, a mo- there was a moment <laughs> right after the twist, though, when he kind of goes full Charlie, where I was like... Okay, De Niro. Like, I see what he's trying to do. Like, mm-hmm. and it was kind of is all like, no, it was. <laughs> also, bring me back I to high school. Hate you. <laughs> Hold on, what? Yeah, Charlie. Yeah, Mally, I gotta show you Charlie the Unicorn. After that is this like is such. Over. Like, that's definitely around this 2004. Yeah, it yeah. Was like, this is peak YouTube era too. Yeah. Like, okay. This anyway, was, this was literally like millennials' entertainment. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is our music Come with us, Charlie. And Eve yeah, on the world. Charlie. <laughs> and I worked at a. I don't. I worked at Hot Topic I don't at like the time. Anything that's happening. I worked at Hot Topic. Worked at Hot Topic. Yeah, and they sh- we had we merch. best friends again. <laughs> we ha- we had Charlie the Unicorn Back merch, with- and I'm like, oh god, peak internet is happening in my. I specifically store right now. pulled these sound cues just for this episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, Charlie. Stop. I mean, Jeez, it's the internet like became that. a cesspool, so it's pretty innocent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. Anyways, recap the uh, okay, for me, please. <laughs> fucking what? Uh, I don't know. The fucking movie ends. <laughs> what an explosive ending! They, yeah, they have they have like the traditional like thriller fight scene at the end. Well, it was like no, oh, yeah. like, which what the, she's fighting why for does her this life. End in a cave. Well, the cave was. Yeah, why does this movie take place in a I cave? I thought he transformed in the cave. Is that not or in the closet? Transformed. Who fucking like knows? Like he became Charlie <laughs> when he was. In he the only cave. has to be his cave. <laughs> is his, his power source. Okay. <laughs> no, because he was Charlie when he killed the wife. So I don't know where his power comes from. Yeah. No, that's why when they had like that scene where they were like backtracking how he was Charlie and then they showed her in the woods and he like pipe- popped out from the cave. I'm like, wh- what? We're just supposed to believe that that happened? That he just came out of the cave and he like killed this butterfly? Yeah, I, d- I don't yes. fucking know. That's what I'm saying. Why Why in the, in the cave? So anyway, I don't know. Fucking he goes all murderous and then Fomka Jensen uh, aims a gun at him and she's like, hide and seek. And shoots him in the fucking head. Oh wait, head. no. Dakota Fanning covers her eyes first, like she doesn't, like she doesn't know what's gonna happen. Oh yeah, and they have one yeah, of those moments where they video. actually said the movie title, God. And like, yeah. I don't like. It doesn't even fit. Like, what? I don't understand why she says hide and seek. I don't either. Yeah, I don't it, get it. it was forced. I don't know. And then we get this very quick wrap up. Uh, Jean Grey adopted Dakota Fanning, and they're all happy. But then it turns out that Dakota Fanning might be crazy now too. Yeah, I don't fucking I'm sorry, know. I have Dude. a question. What's that? I mean, yeah, you're head? fucked up after that. <laughs> is is she now Charlie? Is she the captain now? The final <laughs> shot of this movie is a drawing that uh, Dakota Fanning's doing with crayons, and it shows a character with two heads. I just think that to mean that she has the split personality thing, just oh, like Robert De Niro. Yeah, did. that's that's Which the that, whole implication. That's just there. psychology. Yeah, is that genetic? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, guess so. I, I actually, I actually have heard about schizophrenia being like something that can be genetic, or it can skip okay. a generation. I just well, I don't. Th- they're not schizophrenic. I think it's supposed to be dissociative uh, identity disorder, which has been linked uh, to genetics. Look, it's but also Who doesn't it's have that? true. <laughs> it's most strongly caused by like traumatic events. So like I, which makes it, sense. And it usually develops from childhood traumas. Which her having I it mean, makes sense. She has all the trauma. So. Having it when he's like seventy one well, is a little weird. Was his wife cheating on him? His like. PT- the start of his PTSD. I, that's what they made mm-hmm. it seem like. I, that that's where that's it started. What, we don't yeah. know that though, because they but didn't again, show right. he's, anything he's also before that. He is so man. fucking old in this movie. Yeah, because <laughs> there, because there are certain disorders that can be triggered after specific events, and it's not something that like developed from childhood. 
So me and Brady will be writing the prequel and to this. now we've drifted into mental health care <laughs> podcasting. <laughs> this podcast is for everybody. It's got a little this bit of something for everyone. This is a great episode, man. There's something in it for everybody. <laughs> I will say, though, yeah. the ending of this movie doesn't even fucking matter because there's oh, four God. alternate endings uh, to it. <laughs> so, there's, so even they didn't know what they wanted. So I saw one yeah. where she's in the mental institution if you want to do a recap about that, which is also what? I, I actually have um, short little summaries here of like what okay. the four different ones are. So there's what's called the happy drawing ending, which is the same as this ending that we saw, uh, except that the drawing that Emily is doing uh, only has one head. <laughs> God. <laughs> so there you go. Okay. Um, so they add the second one... head in post? Like just I, in case. I, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Uh, there's an ending called One Final Game. Uh, where it says Emily is shown uh, in a new apartment bedroom, and Catherine, who I guess is Fonka Jensen, Jean Grey, uh, sure. her, her actions mirror that of her mother at the beginning of the movie. Which I don't even know what that means. Does that so mean she's gonna like kill she's... herself? No, she's not gonna kill yeah. herself. The code is gonna kill her. <laughs> uh, she says she reassures her love for Emily uh, and begins to leave the room. Catherine uh, leaves the door open for her, but uh, well, Emily asks her to, but Catherine says she can't. And as the door shuts, uh, a window is visible on the door. I don't know what the fuck is happening here. The next cut is of Catherine locking the door from the outside, uh, revealing that this is actually a hospital room in a child psychiatry (laughs) psychiatric ward. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Anyway. Sure. uh, There's another ending called Emily's Fate. Uh, which is the same as that previous ending, um, but it doesn't have a hide and seek countdown. Oh, I guess in the previous one, Emily gets out of bed and starts counting down, like like in hide and seek, like one, one thousand, two, one thousand. <laughs> Fucking dumb. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the last one that's called Life with Catherine. Uh, it's similar to the sidetrack award ending, uh, but in this one, Emily is not in a ward, but actually in her home. After after Catherine shuts the door, Emily gets out of bed and plays hide and seek with her own reflection. All of these sound fucking terrible. Yeah, these are all dumb. Oh, <laughs> it sounds have... like like basically the same concept, just visually different. They're all terrible. Yeah, it, They're all bad. And is there such a thing as a child psychiatric ward? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Wasn't that the Bradley in <laughs> Columbus? Oh, that's a very good point. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. <I'm sorry. laughs> sorry, I knew a lot of it's people. A... That went to the Bradley. That's a the local one. reference, but yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah have, probably. Okay, I have a question about, this is going back to, sorry, the, one of the middle of the movie where she's like playing mm-hmm. hide and seek. She goes downstairs and she finds like a dungeon with a bed. Yeah. We're not going to talk about So the movie's I, just I, not going to talk oh, about I that. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I was fuck? sleepwalking through this movie, so I don't remember it either. <laughs> I, I just no, yeah, there's a lot of moments where you just zone out. So we just never yeah. talk about a dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Okay. Well, this movie is like um, what what uh, you know. I I listen to a, another podcast that occasionally uses this term, but this movie would is what I would call a hangover movie, where you can just put this on if you have a hangover and you'll be fine. Like it's not too loud. There's you don't really have to follow the plot that much. You can kind of just put it on and just just recover from your hangover. <laughs> like or, it's a very boring yeah. movie. So or I could just you'll be um, fine. watch eight episodes of Ninety Day Fiance and not watch <laughs> five episodes of Ninety there, Day Fiance. There's a lot of better things to put on this background <laughs> noise than our. Yeah, like there's yeah, you can literally so watch anything else. Things, yeah, so. you can watch, watch The Office again and it'll still be better. Yeah, than this. I could, I'd rather do that than <laughs> watch this movie. Pretty much. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we go go ahead and jump to Silver Linings? So, uh, uh, Mally. Um, do you have anything? I'm I'm, I'm awake. <laughs> Do you have a silver lining for uh, 2005's yeah. Hide and Seek? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, silver lining. Um, as with the film Joker, De Niro got what he fucking deserved. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good silver lining. Oh my god. Um, my silver thank lining you, is. Thank you, thank you, thank you're you. You're welcome. My my silver lining is uh, there's so many alternate endings to this movie that you could just weed out the ones that you don't like and go with the more positive. I don't one. like any of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a couple positive. There's at least one positive one. So I mean, you could just go with that. I, this this movie's frustrating because there's nothing to latch on to. Like, there's no character I care if they live or die. Like, even Dakota Fanning, you would think because she's a kid in a horror movie that I would. Hope that she makes it out to the end, which she does. But I'm just like, I don't care. Like, this movie is really that bad that, that 
they they have this character that's supposed to be creepy and therefore I don't latch on to them, so I don't care whether they live or die. And then Robert De Niro, even if I do latch on to him, he's revealed to be the killer, so I don't care if he lives or dies. So take your pick on alternate endings and uh, you'll be just fine. <laughs> um, Brandy and Jen, you guys don't have to have one, but uh, do you have it's an, uh, a silver lining for this movie? Suicide flip book. <laughs> yeah. What? The Suicide uh, Flip book was what? pretty cool. Su- yeah, Suicide Flip book was great. That's just art. I'm here for a child doing this. That's so much that, potential. Oh, oh, so your um, silver lining is that Dakota Fanning is artistic. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like at the end of the day, like Dakota Fanning and Robert De Niro, like they pretty much did what they were supposed to do with that role. Yeah. Like they're, okay. I mean, like, oh, oh, like she they're, went meta with her. She went very meta. <laughs> like they're, like they they're paid? both, like they're both good actors, and they, like, they did that. They did the thing. I like, I like Jen Silver Lining. Of they got paid. That's, yeah, that's the best Silver Lining. <laughs> I just <laughs> all right, but it wasn't I mean, enough it's... to save how horrible the plot and writing no, was. Not. I'll even, I'll even go out on a limb and say it doesn't even matter if there's a Silver Lining to this movie because this movie is not worthy enough. To, like, it's barely worthy enough for us to even do an episode on, um, which, at this point, <laughs> we're, we're, how far into this? We're over an hour <laughs> into this movie. Um, we talked about Hide and Seek for all of ten minutes. Yeah, we did not talk about this <laughs> yeah. movie at all. There's not, like I said, there's not yeah. a lot to talk about. This movie's boring and nothing happened, so... Um, why don't we get into what we like to call pick-me-up movie alternatives. Uh, so this is... If you're watching Hide and Seek and you're doing a double feature, our alternatives would be a movie that you pair with Hide and Seek that is a little more uplifting, get you in better spirits, put you in a better mood after you watch Hide and Seek, which is either going to upset you because it's scary if you're into that kind of thing, or it's going to upset you because of just how bad a movie it is. Um, So, Mally, do you have a pick-me-up movie alternative? Oh, hell yeah. (laughs) Um, I actually considered uh, doing Ready or Not. But I felt yeah, like that was a little obvious. I'm going to go with another extremely fun horror movie in that same vein. Happy Death Day. Oh. Yeah. Happy Death Day is fun, man. Dude, the sequel's great, too. Psyched for the third one. And that director, that or writer, director, one of them, uh, he's got a new movie coming out called Freaky or something. Oh, I saw the trailer mm-hmm. for that. It looks weird. Into it. It looks weird. It looks fun. Yeah. I'm in. Um, I went with a movie that we have actually already mentioned uh, on this episode. I'm going with Meet the Parents. Because <laughs> that movie is Robert De Niro actually Dude, giving a shit. I just watched that. I, I, I think it was when I was back in Indiana for Christmas. Mm-hmm. But it holds I up. rewatched it. Dude, it holds up 100%. It's still awesome. Yeah, it's very funny. It definitely holds up. Uh, and again, Jen and Brandy, you guys um, don't have to have one, but is there a movie you can think of that you think would pair well any, with Hide and Seek as a double feature? Anything yeah. like this. Anything? Well, no, I have one. Anything. Got it. So, um, with this movie, I, I got Six Sense vibes. I feel like this movie mm-hmm. is I was gonna, so That was going to be one, I would say. Yeah, to be Six Sense. And I'm like, I'd rather watch that. Yeah. I could just yeah. put that on right now and just forget I ever watched Hide and Seek. I need to rewatch Six Sense because I've only seen it once and I already I'm, knew the twist. I'm going to voice, in my opinion, I have rewatched Six Sense in the past like year or two. Doesn't hold up. No. I don't think it yeah. would. I figure, like, I know, I've got once you've broken. seen it. Yeah, because yeah, I, I remember like it being it, probably... really good at the time. Yeah. I feel like that's what M. Night Shyamalan was, like, coasting on for a while, was, like, how good that was. Or that's what we thought well, at the time. I gotta say, another movie that came out around that time that he did, well, maybe not around the same time, a little bit later, but another movie he did that does hold up is Unbreakable. That is actually a really good movie. I oh, gotta great. Watch that. Oh, great. I will definitely watch that again. Um, another, it's great. Dude, another movie I thought was, um, I'd rather watch The American The Ring, because that's full of creepy kids. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. That, that, that is a people. great movie. <laughs> Yeah, well, dude, and that I still think that the ring is the reason. Like, it kind of started the whole trend of little kids being way too smart for how old they are. Yeah, that little kid is a piece of shit in that movie. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> is. He is. But after the ring came out, I swear to God, every horror movie was like, "Oh, what if we just make the little kid like oddly 
smart for how old he is. And then like that just became normal for horror movies for a while. It's like, no, it worked specifically for that. You don't have to do it every yeah. fucking time. We'll have to eventually cover the ring on the show too, because that's a great movie. I would rewatch that. Um, that was I good. hope it um, is. The, okay. I feel so- like it's a thing that I'm gonna rewatch and it's not gonna be good. I don't know, man. I could watch Brian Cox electrocute himself to death over and over again that was the wildest shit i'd ever seen at the time and that was like 11 when that movie came out in an, an extremely excessive way to electrocute yourself so as well. excessive <laughs> brady did you have a movie because i think I, I stole one of yours oh well i yeah i was gonna well six cents was one and then another one that i thought was beetlejuice Okay. Because before, oh, hell yeah. before like the plot twist happened, it had like that vibe where it was like this girl moved out to this place in the middle of nowhere, forced by her parents, and she starts talking to spirits. Um, oh, because yeah, there I were moments that. like that. Yeah, and then like we were talking about how like like off putting she was with like her expressions, like she kind of made me think a little. And then like there was one point where she wore like this all black. And like when she came yeah. down, I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh, this is giving yeah, Lydia the little right goth now. version of Dakota yeah. Fanning." Yeah. <laughs> ending where she like, you know, she's off to school. I thought she's gonna start popping and locking with some ghosts. I'm like, "Oh hell yeah!" Yeah, that was part of why I was also so disappointed with the twist. Was like, I did yeah. want it to be like some kind of yeah, like spirit or demon or some shit that like yeah. You know, what, Brady, was, I think like, the movie would have been so herself. much better if it was actually ghosts. Yeah, I that's what I way wanted. Less pissed. <laughs> Yeah. But um, no. Okay. Well, I, I already know the answer to this question, shake, shake but I have Sonora, to ask. <laughs> shake your body line. <laughs> shake, 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 Sonora. I know. Shake it all the time. That's always a happy ending. Yeah. It's go- do, happy ghost. Do any of you recommend this movie? Fuck no. <laughs> I, have, I, I have to ask. I know Brandy's right. I'm going to have to. I second that motion. <laughs> Mally. Across the board. <laughs> right. I say. If you no, no. It's, it's it's so boring and the kills aren't worth it. But just try and find on YouTube the video, uh, the scene of that girl getting yeeted out the window. Because it's Dude, I will say that's one of the most disappointing Great. things in this movie. There's no good deaths. Wait, there is no did good the sheriff deaths. die or because I mean he was kind of dying. I think so. Yeah, he was like he mind. stabbed him. Yeah, and who he cares? Went down. <laughs> I, don't. I love in real time you asked a question and then also realize you don't give a shit about the answer. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, uh, that is it for 2005's Hide and Seek. If you want more of the Silver Linings playlist, like I said, this is episode 101. So there are over 100 episodes in the back catalog because we had some special ones in there, too. Uh, you can find us on any podcasting platform for the most part. Uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. We're on all the major ones for sure. Uh, if you would, please subscribe, rate, leave us some feedback. We really appreciate all that. Um, you can also follow us on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And also Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. You can find a plethora of information there. Um, and you can also give us a suggestion for a movie that you think we should cover on the show. Um, but I have a clue for what next week's episode is going to be. Oh, oh, oh boy. Uh, and that clue is that sometimes a director's cut will make a movie better, but sometimes a producer's cut will change things entirely. Uh, and like I said, because this is October, we're doing all horror movies this month. I feel like fans of a certain franchise might know what I'm talking about. So uh, we I might- love it when you give clues. For like next week's episode, because I also don't know what we're doing next yeah. week, so it's really <laughs> fun for me too. Yeah, uh, and we might have hopefully a returning guest to that episode who is very excited to talk about this movie with us. So, uh, Jen and Brandy, thank you so much for being on this the show. Yeah, uh, thanks for having I'm us. I'm sorry <laughs> that you had to watch this movie. Oh, I forgive You're you. You're fucking welcome. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I wish I had a reason for all the other like terrible movies I wasted my time on. Like, I wish I had it to at least be a reason to be on this podcast. Yeah, something came out of you watching a terrible movie. Yeah. And next time, if we do Secret Window, you guys next definitely have to time. be on. <laughs> <laughs> If oh, you want to you're come back, fuck, you're you're in now. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you guys are, uh-huh. are are inundated now into the show. So I did yeah. one episode with Dustin four years ago, and here he's the fuck I am. Here. He's like, he's been around. We're stuck now, Jen. Damn. Yeah. 
<laughs> you try to do something nice for someone and they just say, hey, watch this turd of a movie and then talk about it for an hour. To be fair, I warned you guys ahead of time this movie was terrible. So, you did. And and also, it was fair, when I picked it, I didn't know what it was. And I also gave you a choice of other episodes to be on. And this is the one <laughs> we settled on. Wait, uh, why but, did you wait? You guys have the option to do another oh, episode. We had options, and I—I I think it was mostly because also bad choices. <laughs> like Dustin knew <laughs> we would have a lot to like say when it comes to like flaming stuff because me and Jen mm-hmm. have had like a history of our friendship Most where masters. we just like yeah we just hate watch stuff and trash it together. So oh, yeah, that was when we lived together. That was like our thing. <laughs> Yeah. No, this this worked out. This was a perfect marriage. Between well, in that them. case, you're definitely <laughs> fucking welcome then. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you guys are more than welcome to come back if you if you're interested in doing so in the future. So, uh, Mally, is there anything else we want to talk about before we go? No. Okay. <laughs> Mally's like, give me the so fuck out of this. here. He's so over give this me fucking my Sunday episode. Back. <laughs> Well, again, thank you for listening, everyone. Tune in next week where we're talking a horror franchise. Uh, and as always... Candy Mountain, Charlie! <laughs> yeah, Charlie! I fucking... I knew you were going to do that. I, I don't know why. I... Dustin, show him those videos. <laughs> ex- ex- we're watching that. I can't Excelsior believe he never saw them. <laughs> I know, they're so it was like It was like when everybody saw old Greg. Like, it was just... Oh, God. That's another inter- internet relic. It's like y'all are speaking Chinese to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up on a farm. We didn't have internet. <laughs> Damn. Excelsior. 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 Oh. Look at us. Oh.